All right, guys, we are back. Uh, but before we start, all credit goes to both Simo and Hoosman, who are Hossman, the in original inventors of the Massacre series. Before we get started on that, would you like to make your Master Duel experience much better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your deck so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, we are back. Let's get to the deck building portion. But before we get even into that, I have a quick question for you guys. How long do you want these episodes to be? Because I've gotten so many mixed signals on this. I've gotten some people that say they should be longer. They should be shorter, like 50 minutes. They should be you know, the, the, the exactly the, the, the length that they are now. You guys tell me how long you want these episodes to be and I'll try to accommodate to that because I've had comments, literally comments arguing with comments about how long these episodes should be. You guys tell me. Uh, right here, we've got our decks. Um, I've adjusted a few things. We've got our Dragon Warrior deck here. I've cut out the machine, so now it's just Dragon Warrior. No machines. I've made a lot of changes. I put in Curse of Dragon, so it works the, with the Heretics, uh, and it's searchable with this dude right here. Uh, so now we have Curse of Dragon. He's also a level 5. He can help us get into the rank 5. So stuff like that. We've got some rank 5 dragons. Vice Dragon's a free special summon. Heretic Dragon is uh, just a free normal summon. He summons himself as a level 5. We've got a lot of things going on in this deck. Uh, we need more like options for attacking and extra deck stuff like that. So I think this is a decent direction that the deck is going. We also have like Guard Dragon Cataclysm and Dragon Maid Tiding and stuff like that. And of course, you know, some of the other good cards we have. And then of course, the Abyssal Luber is actually quite a decent card. It can steal blue eyes as you guys told me. Uh, then for our machine stuff, I've, I just kind of added machine, all our machine support to a folder here. We've got some decent machine support going on. Uh, definitely worth keeping an eye on in the background. Some cool synchro machine stuff. And then, of course, this is the deck that we have been playing, which is the best cards we have. Uh, and I've made some adjustments to this deck. I've added the Motor Frenzy because he's actually just a good card, honestly. He's just a solid card um, that he's probably our best tribute summon right now. I, I cut the arm dragon level five i'm just waiting to cut some of these other cards uh, if i'm being totally honest but he's definitely something that is uh he's just a decent like tribute summon monster and then he gets additional effects uh because we tribute summon him so i added that and then what else should we add we got to add this dude right here because he's actually summonable and uh probably just cut this out until later in the normal deck i think that that should be good enough but overall our deck is improving. Uh, let's go get into a duel. All right. So uh, we lost the coin flip, but our opponent wanted us to go first, which I am totally fine with with this hand. Uh, our hand is looking just kind of okay. Um, this isn't bad, but it just doesn't really help us right now. This is probably good because it gives us another card on summon. So I'm probably just going to summon the Rux Rose. We do have There Can Only Be One, which is one of the most important cards in our deck. This will replace the monster we, we search out, which is good. And we'll get this available to us. And I think we just... Actually, this is cool. These two work together, which is nice. But I have no payoff right now because this is a level 4. This is a level 3. Uh, if we had a level 7, this would be really cool. We could go into something, but we don't really have anything. I guess we can go into the Tengu, the winged thing, but I don't think that actually benefits us in any way. So I'm just going to set a card and pass here. Um, not not really like a bad start whatsoever. Uh, decent for sure. I forgot. To, I just realized I forgot to change the our duelist icon, so i got to change that afterwards. The duelist icon and maybe the rabbit we got to finally switch out. All right, this is off to a good start as long as it's not Labyrinth. He's playing Gaia. Okay. Okay. I think we could have a good situation on our hands, possibly. If we, we can lock... The problem is he's playing both Warriors and Dragons. So we can lock him into, you know, one or the other. But one Warrior or one Dragon. But 
Obviously, he could just keep summoning other warriors and other dragons. We want him to summon this. So if we if he summons a warrior and a dragon, then we basically lock him into those two, and then he can't fusion summon. That's our goal here. He can definitely OTK us, though, for sure. 100% he can definitely OTK us. We want him to summon that Curse of Dragon. Now we want to activate our card. Okay, now we activate this, and he's locked into Warrior slash Dragons. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So now that Spiral Fusion's not going to work. I should have just waited for him to activate Spiral Fusion, and then it would have fizzled, but it's whatever now. I guess we just have to deal with it. Can this attack the turn it's normal summon? Yeah, it can attack. So basically, you can attack over our Rocks Rose Dragon. And his monsters have some high attack. Even the free special summoned ones are just they have really high attack. Also, if I remember correctly, this field spell is kind of good too. Yeah, we can't activate anything during the battle phase whatsoever. That, that effect is also kind of crazy. So none of our floating effects will work in the battle phase. It's just, that's just insane. That ga ga Galloping Gaia card. This is actually a really good card against our deck. Because we have a lot of battle phase shenanigans going on in our deck. Let's see. Hopefully we draw something half decent here. Fires of Doomsday. We'll protect our life points. But doesn't really help us too much. Man. Man, man, man. I think we just defend our life points. Set this and just pass here. Oh wait, I could have, I could have equipped the Big Bang shot to uh, his monster, and then when he attacks, he does piercing on our zero tokens. But it's whatever. We're still defending our life points until you get something. Okay, he can destroy a card if a Gaia the Dragon Champion declares an attack. He can't summon a Gaia the Dragon Champion. Because we have the Curse of Dragon on board. We're still in a decent situation. Other than the fact that he's just got two pretty big monsters on the board. That we can't really out. And the thing is if we out either one of them. He, he gets to basically keep playing. Which is not good for us. Like if we out this. He gets to use Spiral Fusion. And then go into Gaia the Fierce Knight. Which is us piercing among other things. Catapult Turtle. Okay, that's fine. He can't use the effective Catapult Turtle. Because, obviously. He would summon something. I'm just going to let these slide right now. So now we activate this. and It's a pretty nice loop there. So we get Rocks Rose back. Yeah, we're just going to let this slide. Wow, that's actually pretty good. The Aluber. That can let us steal his monster, but better yet, that can let us steal the guy, the dragon champion that he summons. Uh, but I think I'm going to go into a synchro play here. So I'm going to activate this. The special summon. We're going to discard the level 5 to special summon this. Normal summon this. It'd be nice if we had a level 8 synchro. Because then we could have really gone into something. I could have normal summoned this somehow. That would have been interesting. So now we're going to go into the level 7 synchro that we have access to now. I'm going to start attacking over things. And we have the highest attack now which is nice. I'm going to just attack over the, uh, attack over the catapult turtle. The fake catapult turtle. I think we're just going to pass here. We still have the Fires of, Fires of Doomsday, by the way, does nothing against his deck. Because he actually does piercing. Uh, not with the monsters he has here, but like with the, the boss monster. The guy at boss monster actually does piercing. The smart thing for him to do, which would actually win us the game. Would be actually to enter the battle phase. Uh, use this dragon right here to crash into our monster. And then he can use his Spiral Fusion in main phase too. And if he does that, then we can use the Aluber to steal the Spiral Dragon and attack with his with his Spiral Dragon. Uh, because it has multiple attacks in the same battle phase. That would actually be great for us. 
This field spell was crazy. The Galloping Gaia. Literally no effects. Your opponent cannot activate uh, card effects in the battle phase. It's insane. And then every single turn, reveal one, search the other. It's just... A, that is a really, really, really good um, field spell. The problem is we need to, like... This guy has a really good matchup against us. Uh, if it wasn't for there can only be one, we just would have lost already. Alright, he's going to... Yep, that's fine. Alright, let's see what we draw. Uh, Cubic Ascension... You would think does something, but he actually, again, he, he does piercing. His biggest monsters do piercing. So I think we just attack into the guy, the Magical Knight. Because, again, the extra deck monster is a dragon. So we'll just do some damage, attack into this thing. Uh-oh. What do we have here? We have some uh, some lag. What's going on? We're going to attack the guy, the Magical Knight. Uh, because, again, the extra deck monster is indeed a... Oh wait, he has that one that he can discard to make his monster gain attack. Shit, I forgot all about that. Yeah, there's there's a guy that yeah that one. no not that one does it. Yeah, it gains fifteen hundred attack. I forgot all about that thing. Uh, that's fine. I guess nothing we could do about that. Fine. Actually, it, it like it helps me because he's still locked into stuff. So now we're gonna set the cubic ascension and we're just gonna pass here. So now when he attacks. I would use the Big Bang Shot, but the problem is this is kind of like a, a last resort to Big Bang Shot. Like, this is when the game's close. We attach Big Bang Shot to one of his monsters. We can do it. Oh, shit. I just realized. Ugh, I just realized something really dumb. Okay, okay, okay. So, turns out, right, we actually can't activate any effects in the battle phase. So, our cubic extension actually does nothing. I just, just realized that because of the Galloping Gaia. So, if he tries to enter the battle phase, I gotta use the... Uh, the, the tokens to protect our life points before he enters the battle phase. Because once he enters the battle phase, nothing we can do. So I just realized Cubic Ascension is just completely turned off. It does nothing right now. <laughs> you know what card we could really use? We need a Moon Mirror Shield. Moon Mirror Shield would be like the ultimate card again. Fuck, you didn't even let me... Uh... I thought I couldn't activate anything in the battle phase. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects that... while Guy the Dragon Champion is in the monster zone. Okay, 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 okay. Then it's fine. Then, then we do... Uh... Wait, what about Cubic Ascension, then? Alright, so I guess we couldn't activate it before. Now we can activate it. Now he's forced to attack that. We're going to move the Cubic Ascension back here. The Cubic, uh, the regular Cubic back here. So now that thing can attack. And I guess we can, to a certain degree, stall this one out. Like, what would even benefit us right now? I guess we just keep accumulating resources until until we make a move. So he has a monster that can't attack. Um, this would possibly not be able to attack in a second. Then we just accumulate resources. And eventually we just go for games. So things like Dragon Maid Tiding, Expendable Die. Um, just draw those like... Uh, yeah, Attraction, Expendable Die, Dragon Maid Tiding... Just a variety of cards like that. Twister doesn't really help. Back to square one. Karaz. Just just keep accumulating resources. Accumulating resources until we can do something about his monsters. And then hopefully we just uh, we can just win there. Nice. We stalled this one out. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Um, so he realized it's going to be very tough for him to out. And he surrendered. I will take that win. This is what our deck does. It annoys our opponent into <laughs> scooping uh, for now. All right, we ranked up into gold four, man. We are moving up these ranks, which is actually is not a good thing because three legacy tickets, that's a good thing. All right, so this is our first win. We can't take any of the new secret packs. Not that I would. Now, I, I can only take one, so I can no longer ever take this secret pack again. I can still take this and this and this if we get three wins, but I don't even know if these are worth going into. Maybe this one, but other than that, not really. But right now, master pack. Let's open this thing up. I'm so excited for the master pack. I don't even care that there aren't any hollows because I was just I was just texting a friend funny enough and we were just like discussing cards that would be helpful and perfume bottle doesn't really help. Yeah, I was texting and, and there's a lot of commons and rares that would really help. Perfume bottle is a Luna light card. This might be good. Okay, unfortunately, it's not generic enough to be good. Uh, double dust tornado twins. All right, so this actually isn't this is a goofy card. I don't even know why this really exists. 
Uh, fabled card, it's if it's discarded to the graveyard special summon it. We have actually some fabled cards. We have one of the really big fabled monsters. I don't think we can really use this yet, but this really isn't bad because it's like if it's discarded for any reason, you get to bring it back. Cloud Castle is a generic 9, which is nice. Um, and then we can target a level 9 monster in our graveyard, special summon that target. That isn't really that bad. And this is, I guess, level eight or lower. I guess this is, it's it's a summonable card. Let's just let's just let's just put that. It is a summonable card. So that's that's a decent change. Having a summonable card, summoning a level nine. I think we only have that one level nine. It's the machine monster, actually. So maybe in a machine in our machine deck, we can add this in and just have this kind of in the background. This is a Plunder Patrol card. I don't believe this is usable and it requires a Fusion Summon. and Not yet. Uh, this is Ruddy Rose Witch, which is actually a part of our Rose Support. Alright, so this isn't bad if we just get more uh, Rose stuff. This actually is a half-decent card. Uh, but we don't have this Witch of the Black Rose, so we can't really do this full combo. Also, we don't have any payoff because we don't have uh, like Black Rose or anything like that. Now, for the Super Air. Fingers crossed, something good. Honestly, my hopes aren't even that high. I don't really care what I get. Let's just see what we get. A Lyra Lusk monster that requires two level ones. It's totally generic, and we can make this with Vidjom. Do we have any other level ones? I don't even know, but we can make this with Vidjom. All right, so this card honestly isn't even that bad, and it's generic uh, removal of spawn trap cards, but I don't know if we have enough level ones to actually play it. So we're definitely playing this card, but I don't know if we have enough level ones to like do anything with this card but it's actually good generic removal so we have this it's i'm gonna play it and then the fable i'm probably not gonna play yet cloud cast i'm gonna put in just because it's generic so we have two generic extra deck monsters that aren't great but they're better than what we have now all right also somebody was asking like if we should save up all of the legacy tickets like all of the ones that we get from the entire episode and just open them all at the end of the episode i think that's a half decent idea actually to just open them at the end of the episode like all 100 percent of them um yeah, I, I think that would be kind of cool. Just open them all at the end. I guess let me know what you guys think. If you think I should open them all in the middle of the episode or at the end. Uh, right now, I'm just going to open them at the middle. Just because we're going to stick to what we're doing now. But next time, we might be able to do that. Alright, so this card basically skips your opponent's battle phase. Um, it's a spirit monster, so it returns to the hand. It's I don't think it's that good. Uh, this is a level 8. That is 2800. That's a Cyburst monster. It's a normal monster. We can search it with the... I forget the card. But we can search it with our, our, our Magic Key card. That's what, it is. That's what it is. And it's a Cyburst monster. And actually, we can use it with that Cyburst Ritual monster that we have. Because we can tribute and summon that. Alright, so this card just inflicts 300 uh, damage when it destroys an opponent's monster. Um, it's 1600 attack. It's a warrior. It's got decent stats, but we've got warriors with better stats with better effects So I don't think we're gonna play that and then the Kowaki the the Mo Moa Interceptor cannons uh, this card's always cool. Um, it could just flip itself face down, but that's about it It's a rock monster. It's got decent stats and not that strong It's got de decent defense, but not that strong. Let's see what we get out of this one I didn't mean to do that calming magic all right, so during the battle phase, neither player can summon. I don't know if that helps us. So this can change our opponent's monsters to the uh, to defense. Um, this actually isn't even really that bad uh, because during the end phase, it can change all of our like attack position monsters to defense mode, so they can kind of like protect our life points. Honestly, it's not even like that bad of a card. And then it can change our opponent's monsters to defense. Uh, which can help because if they have weaker defense than attack, that also can help. So it can either defend our life points or, you know, put their monsters to defense mode, which is cool. But it does nothing against link monsters. Like it's it's a decent card to consider. It's also good with the piercing card that we have. It can definitely be an interesting card to consider. Last pack. I thought we had three packs. There must have been a pack that I forgot to open at the last of, uh, the the end of the last episode. All right, so we need a Blackwing monster for this to be usable. Uh, this card's actually not even bad. Unbreakable Spirit. Uh, because it... it's a, Yeah, it's not bad. If our opponent summons some big monster... Uh, 
even if they don't summon a big monster, if they summon like one big monster and try to attack us, our monster gains attack equal to their monster's lowest attack. Which if they have one monster, we have one monster. This is actually quite good. And like, if let's say we have Vijom and they have Luster Dragon, and we have like an attack position position Vijom, we let them attack us, and then when they just crash, and Vijom can't be destroyed by battle. So this can actually be half decent. I'd say this is going into the deck for now. This is this is actually a half decent card. All right, so this is the deck. We've got. A few cards. I'm taking out the Light Imprisoning Mirror, and I'm actually putting in that that Unbreakable Spirit card. I think that'll actually help us significantly more. I think we should play the Cowed Castle, just because you can summon it. And we will play the Lear Lusk Monster. We would only have one level one, but I mean, it's better than nothing. And I think it's better than the Numeron Gate, for example. And what else are we cutting? This is three. This is summonable. Is this summonable? Is generic? This is not generic. We can't play that, so... So there we go, this is our Dragon Warrior deck, and let's go adjust our best cards we have so far deck. Best cards we have so far, uh, we're going to add this, and we're going to add the this card right here. And we are definitely going to add that Unbreakable Spirit, and we're going to cut something here. I don't even know what to cut. Honestly, I'm cutting Dark Door, because it really actually has been uh, worse for us than anything else. I'm going to cut this one, because it requires an Insect, and I'm going to cut... Probably the same thing, the Numeron Gate, since we're never going to probably summon it. Let's go duel. All right, we just won the coin flip. I chose to go first. Our hand isn't looking too bad, so we're going to set the Greffer, the Train, and the Expendable Die. Hopefully, we draw a Dragon. If we draw a Dragon, we've definitely got some plays going on here. But right now, I think this is this is good enough here, because we've got the Warrior side of the deck. If we draw into the Dragons, it'll be really good. Tidying, plus Guard, Dragon, Cataclysm. We drew every like trap card in our deck all in one turn. It really depends on what he's playing, though. He could be playing something absolutely broken, like Dogmatica, where he just keeps getting like a free, like free monster effects, and that could be really bad for us. Dogmatica can be really, really, really annoying sometimes. When he adds the Fleur, he's got this Dogmatica Matrix and all this. Honestly, I don't think we're gonna win this one, um, but I guess we'll just wait it out a little bit. Brandon and High Spirits. Honestly, I don't think we're going to win this. He just has too much of a resource loop, and we're, we're, we're not going to win this duel. Like, we can only win those kinds of duels if we have, like, evenly matched. Otherwise, we're just wasting our time, honestly. All right. We just lost the coin flip, but our opponent made us go first, so I guess we'll see what happens. Our hand isn't, like, the worst hand ever, but it's definitely not great either. We're going to set this, set this, and set the Unbreakable Spirit and just pass here. We have Cubic Assist. It just depends what he's playing. If he's playing some absolutely busted deck, we're just going to scoop because we have no chance. This is too weak of an opening. We have Vijom and then some other battle protection. He's playing... I don't even know what this is. Mikanko. Okay. That's not good. I've never seen anybody run the Mikanko field spell. I'm not going to lie. And by the looks of things, his hand didn't go so well. And I don't believe that we can beat Mikanko. Doing regular Mikanko things, which is all fine, because funny enough, we have a bunch of zero defense monsters. So our zero defense monsters, I don't think, are going to uh, do any damage to to us, so I guess we just leave them here. Honestly, this deck is just way too constructed. We're not going to win this one. We just got to be more realistic. Alright, we just won the coin flip, chose to go first. Uh, we absolutely bricked. I really like Karaz is a card I just I want to get rid of so badly. I, I don't want him. Karaz, Arm Dragon level 5. Parry Knights is okay. Sometimes. Big Bang Shot going first is absolutely worthless. There's just certain cards we have that are just like, dude, they don't they don't do anything for us sometimes. Like I just I'm dying to get rid of some of these cards. Like absolutely dying. I, I don't want to see them in my opening hand ever again i don't know what my opponent's playing but this is a really bad start bro it's just draw cards and oh, it's self tk okay <laughs> it's like eight thousand draw cards at least i think it's self tk it might be uh nurse burn nurse burn we just lose self tk we just win well if it's nurse burn he doesn't have the freaking nurse and he's making us gain life points which is not good yeah it's nurse burn okay it is indeed a nurse burn deck uh, there's not a chance we're beating this deck because our deck is too slow to do enough damage to stop this. So, I mean, we hope that we win, but I don't think that we will actually win. So now we're just taking a 1,000 every time he draws. 
But this hand is just absolute dog shit right now. Like this, I don't have a normal summonable monster that can get over this nurse. And now he's got Carter demise. Yeah, this is not. This is not looking good. This is this is looking like a loss to me. This is just absolute garbage hand. These three right here. I think last time we lost, we had the same stupid hand right here. Like arm dragon level five. I want to get rid of these two so badly. Now I could take the damage um, and summon parry knights. But I'm just, I can't risk losing too much damage because I'm playing against a nurse burn. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go with these two tokens. Even though I can't tribute these except for... I can only tribute for, uh, for dark monsters. And I have a wind, a, a light, and an earth. Which of course is totally not what we need right now. So I can't tribute these unless it's for a dark monster. I can link someone with them. But I don't have any link monsters whatsoever in my extra deck. None. Uh, not by choice. Just don't. And this is where we lose because he has five, sp uh, six spawn trap cards, and we drew something we can't use again. Uh, so this duel is essentially over. Uh, we can't. We literally cannot do anything. So I guess we just nurse, activate the tidying, attach it to the nurse. Hopefully he attacks us and and pass turn here because we have nothing, nothing at all to do. We have an absolute brick fest. Again, like how do you brick in this deck? Like, we have so many level 4s, so many level 3s, so many level 2s. Just all the tribute monsters all in one turn. Like, look at this. Look at all this stuff we can use. None of it. None of it. And then we draw... Even these are special summonable. Special summonable. All of these. Except for now. Now, here's our extra... Deck mon here's our, like, extra tribute monsters right here. From, like, here to here. From Arm Dragon to, like, here. And we somehow drew all of them. Now, hopefully he attacks. I don't know if he'll figure out. Nope, he won't attack. He figured it out. If we can get rid of this, uh, no, nah, that doesn't help. Samochi, gift card, gift card, it's 3,000, 3,000. If he has one more gift card, he wins the duel. And 3,000. All right, we lost. That sucks. Yeah, we just, I, I, how do you break? It's on, it's like, it's unbelievable. It's, it's like two times we've bricked where it's just like an unplayable hand and I hate those cards. All right, so we've got another game here. I believe we lost the coin flip when our opponent chose to go first, but let's remain let's remain positive here because last duel was bro nurse burn, and we just brick. How do you brick in this deck? <laughs> How the hell do you brick? This deck is unbrickable. Like, yeah, the cards suck, but why are we bricking? We're drawing just just like honestly, they might as well have given us Amazonas Queen while we're at it. Just all our tribute monsters. I don't know what our opponent's playing here. What is this? Maybe sprites, since it's a level two. Maybe Melfi's. Maybe just end phase. Good to see. Good to see. Now the question is, do we summon Barrier Statue? This Barrier Statue, if he is playing sprites, is pretty damn good because all his monsters are pretty weak. Melfi. Okay. I think if we normal summon the barrier statue, we could get some we can get some things going here. If we nor if we just straight normal summon barrier statue, he can't do all any of his Melfi stuff, which I think could actually yeah, I think we might do that. Alright, let's try to do that. Ready, let's see if he lets us yep, he let us go to the main phase. Whoosh. That turns off the all the Melfi things as far as I know. And now he can't do any of the Melfi stuff. Okay, that's fine. See, now he just returned it and he didn't get the special summon. Good, good, good. Uh, now we just go to battle phase. This is where a moon mirror shield would literally win us the game. And we just set two. We can't activate the cubic ascension yet because obviously barrier statue. Uh, but all of his monsters are really weak. This is a good thing about Melfi's. All of the main deck monsters are like, they have like nothing in terms of attack. So we might be able to, we might be able to, Get, we might be able to run away with this one. We might be able to do it. Barrier statue and there can only be one. That's like that's like a killer combo. Barrier statue, there can only be one. If we had power frame right now, that'd be fire. If we had threatening roar right now, that would be amazing. Power frame, unbreakable spirit. Oof, that'd be a great one right now. There can only be one. Like I said, there's a few cards right now. If we could. We could draw them right now. They could, they could, they could close this out for us. We really, we need something. If we could get a book of moon. That would be a nice card for us to pull. There's a card that I've been dreaming of pulling, literally dreaming of pulling. 
Hopefully one day we pull another weak monster. Okay, that is really, really weak. Good. I don't know what he's got planned here, but he entered the battle phase with this, and he just lost his monster. Fine by me. I don't know what kind of, like, mania. This, this guy's insane. I don't know what's going on here. But right now, we've got a lead against a deck we should not have a lead against. And we've got... Our hand really isn't that bad in terms of follows. We've got the Zubaba, the Photon Crusher. We've got Twister, Cubic Ascension. We've got some follow-ups now. He's going to go to end phase. That's good. If we could draw one of our cards to protect the barrier statue. That would be good. Bestial Luber. He plays no dragon, so I'm not even going to bother with that. I think I'm just going to go... I think I'm just going to go the Gagaga. -ga. We've also got the Photon Crusher. He changes himself to the defense position, so our opponent can out it after we attack. So I think I'm just going to... What can I summon? Oh, yeah, I can summon the Sioux Ship. I'm not going to summon the Sioux ship yet because I want to keep this barrier. Barrier statue is the only reason we haven't lost yet. Just, let's just make that very clear. A lot of people tell me, play aggressive. This, this barrier, if it wasn't for this barrier statue, there would be no playing at all. There would be a, a Melfi Synchro Monster, a Melfi Exceed Monster. There would, there would, we wouldn't be playing right now. They'd be playing and we'd be, we'd be losing. We'd be gone. We'd be surrendering, looking for the next match if it wasn't for the Melfi stuff. If it wasn't for this barrier statue, people tell me, you, you should make this. You should have made the Sioux ship. I should have made the Sioux ship. We're playing against full archetypes here. What are you, crazy? If there was a Melfi fire monster, we really wouldn't be here. Thank God these Melfis are weak. He's about to summon like a Mega Melfi. Wow. Capshell. Another weak monster. This is like, we played against... We... This is a Pharaoh moment. I gotta say it. This is a Pharaoh moment. He su All of his monsters in his main... All of his main deck monsters are shrimps. They're terrible. This is like that, like Chaz when he, uh, this is again, this is like when Chaz went down there and his brother was like, you can only summon, mon you can only play with monsters that are 500 attack. This is what happened to this poor guy. We're, we're dueling against Chaz Princeton, but we're Yugi, we're going to win. Poor guy. Now he's like, he's depressed. He's like attacking into our monsters with his zero attack monsters. I, we, I, we, I, I feel bad to a certain degree. I don't, but I feel bad a little, but I really don't because our deck is a disaster. So I don't really care. I'll take the win. He should have surrendered. End phase. Woo! Yeah, this barrier statue. This has been a couple of times. This dude's coming clutch. We, this is physically impossible to use right now. Uh, we're going to go. Do we flex? Do we flex? That's the question. Do we flex? He can't Nibiru us anyway. No, he can't Nibiru us. Uh, we're going to flex a little. We're not going to super flex, but we're going to flex a little. We're gonna make the Sioux ship just because we have that challenge in the background. The uh, I think the 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 Academy challenge or whatever it's called. We need to summon a certain amount of Exceed monsters and like Pendulum monsters and Fusion monsters. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this just so we can clear that out. Woof! We got a win here. All right, that was a good one. I'm so excited to open a Master Pack right now. I'm thrilled. We really need a Master Pack. All right, two Legacy packs. Let's go see what we're opening. All right, we've got a Master Pack. Doesn't show any signs of life, but that doesn't really matter. I told you there are there are rare cards, there are normal cards that we want. Photon, two photon monsters. I don't think we have any fusion cards, so I don't think we can summon. Maybe the Dragon Maid fusion card, two photon monsters. We I think we can actually summon this, but I don't even know if this is worth summoning. All this does is just you contribute it and then turn it back into the materials you use to make it. It's like the dumbest thing ever. Uh, so I don't think we're going to use that. This is actually. A generic level 7 Synchro Monster. Woo! Let's see what this does. This is pretty good. This is spot removal. Listen, this is spot removal. It's generic and it's spot removal. It has 2,500 attack. We can make this. We have level 3 tuners. We have level 4 monsters. We can make this with that rose card. This is a card that we can actually go into that is actually good. Not like great, but it's summonable. So we're going to go ahead and play that for sure. Downbeat. I don't think that this helps us immediately, but this is something to keep in the background. It's not bad. Unchained Twins Saras, Sarama. Okay, we do actually have an Unchained card. We have the Unchained Trap that special summons an Unchained Monster from the deck. We do have that, but I don't think that's worth playing as of right now because we don't have enough Unchained stuff. So we officially have two Unchained cards. I think at one point we can play an Unchained Engine, but not right now. We only have two Unchained cards. Uh, Magical Musketeer Wild. We don't have enough Magical Musketeer cards to actually make that worth playing. Uh, 
beast magic attack. We don't have enough mythical beasts to make this worth playing, at least not right now. We've got the symphonic warrior piano. Uh, we don't have symphonic warriors, unfortunately. Yeah, we don't have enough of those, so I don't think that's worth playing right now. And then this is the heroic card. I don't think we have enough heroics, but screw all that. We got the Photon Zeta, which is a special summonable generic synchro monster that we can make, and we can use it to out our opponent's monsters and then return them back to the field. But who the hell cares because we finally have a generic form of removal and a half-decent extra deck monster. So let's go open those legacy packs. All right, here come the legacy packs. Just two this time. We've got the lights are shining. We don't know what's going on. Marshmallow on glasses. We don't have marshmallow on. Uh, jellyfish. I don't need that. Uh, not great on either end. I mean, maybe if we get some Ubi cards, we'll play this. And then marshmallow on glasses. I don't think we really have a reason to play because we don't have marshmallow on. Marshmallow on would actually possibly play. Marshmallow on's not bad. Uh, we'll see what we get here. More lights. Man, I'm going to fall apart here. All these lights to have nothing. Overlay eater. Okay, this is just dumb. Banish this from the graveyard and then attach a monster from your opponent's extra deck monster or extra deck monster. What? Who, is th who thought that was a good idea? All right, this is not that great either because essentially it's, it has to be a monster that's destroyed by battle during your turn. So you have to like crash it. So the only card this would be like good with is like maybe like a shining angel or something like that. But like it, it's just not that great otherwise. Uh, nothing out of the legacy packs. Let's go fix up our deck. All right, out of the Dragon Warrior deck, I think we're just adding, again, the Zeta. Uh, what are we taking out for the Zeta? Probably something we can't special summon at this time. So I think we can summon, actually, most of this. Four level four light monsters, I don't think we're summoning that. So we're going to go ahead and just add the Zeta. I'm actually kind of excited about the Zeta. We'll save that. And then we'll go to the regular best cards we have. And then we'll adjust, add the Zeta in. And take out the Numeron. Let's go duel. All right. We lost a coin flip on our opponent chose to go first. We, of course, got Arm Dragon level 5. I can't wait to get rid of this guy. I've been talking about it for so long. Uh, but I seem to get him in every hand recently. Like, dude, what do you want from me, man? I don't, I'm don't. i sorry. You're just not usable. You're level 5. Your effect is, like, foolish. I mean, you have to discard a monster to destroy a monster with less attack than a monster you got discarded. All our monsters are weak. He's playing Dark Magician. This is not looking good for us. Uh, this is rough already. We have no normal summonable monster. He searches Dark Magician. Everything's going wrong. Our hand is uh, uh, like, for, like terrible. We do have Threatening Roar and stuff like that. But if we can bury a statue into Threatening Roar. If we can bury a statue right now into uh, Power Frame. We might be able to do some stuff. I've played against so much Dark Magician, I'm just absolutely tired of it. I don't want to play against Dark Magician anymore. I want to play against something else. We've lost to them so many times. We've beaten them a couple of times, but Dark Magician is starting to really get on my nerves. We do have cards that can help us out our opponent's stuff, though. Like we, we if they have, uh, we do have things like the uh, Destruction card. I forget what it's called. We have a few destruction cards like Iron Dragon and we have Twister and we have Parallel Twister. Like we have some cards to to beat our Dark Magician deck. We have the Expendable Die and we have the uh, Guard Dragon Cataclysm. Like we've got some stuff that can out Dark Magician, which is actually quite nice. But I don't know what it is about the combination of what we draw and when we draw it. But we never draw the stuff we need against Dark Magician when we need it. Like ever. We just we just don't like except for that one time where we drew that barrier statue absolutely insane all right it's about time our opponent's gonna end phase um the board's not looking super good but it's you know more bricks more bricks i i know i chose to play them but i mean come on man why do we always draw this dude this is you unusable right now this is somewhat usable so i'll set it this is somewhat usable so i'll set it i might as well set the power frame because eventually it'll be usable but our, our, this is basically our end phase here. Like I said, I don't know how it happens in this deck, but we always brick. Whenever I play this Dragon Warrior Machine deck, we always brick. I guess it's Dragon Warrior now, but like, dude, every time we brick. And I understand we are playing Tribute Monsters, but like, we're playing so many non-Tribute Monsters. Why do we draw the Tribute Monsters? 
so many good cards, and now he's going to get the Banish. Honestly, I think this setup is too good right now, but I'm going to wait it out a little bit longer. Because now he's going to be able to circle, and I if he circles away the... If he circles the Threatening Roar, I'll just scoop it up, because this brick has just been too bad. Alright, the Amazement Attraction Train is fine. He can get rid of that. I don't really care. So we, we, we do have... We can buy ourselves another turn, which is okay. Alright, now he's going to draw with the Soul Servant. He put the... Uh, this thing on top. The Magician Salvation. So now he's going to have access to Eternal Soul. Eternal Soul actually is not the end of the world, because Eternal Soul literally outs his board. Uh, which is nice. Cause while it is good for us, it's also, you know, while it is amazing for him, it's also good for us because literally if he just activates this and we have any removal whatsoever, we can pop everything on his board. If we have like Twister or something. But we can't do anything if we keep bricking. And the funny thing is, I didn't even really want to play Curse of Dragon, but I have to play it because um, it's, it's a normal dragon that works with a lot of the other stuff that we have. But so far, we just haven't drawn. So this, we, we keep drawing this. This is our second time drawing this. This is like our millionth time drawing this. But we actually haven't drawn um, the level 5. Well, we have drawn Heratic, but he's actually quite good. Because he, he can be somewhat useful. He works with the Curse of Dragon. Uh, battle phase, we're going to activate this. And then he's not going to be able to attack with any of his monsters. This, has, this card's been saving our ass, I'm not going to lie. It's not quite like a mirror force, but... Oh, yeah, I forgot he has that. All right, that's the game. Yeah, that's 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 over there. I forgot all about that. All right. Yeah, the last game we were not going to win. We do have the, the outs to play against, like, that deck, but unfortunately we never... Uh, to play Beat Dark Magician, but we never actually draw it. We're playing against uh, Mr. Blue King with the blue eyes, and he's also chosen for us to go first. I mean, second... Uh, I can only imagine what he's playing. It's probably Blue Eyes, but well, I guess we'll see. Because he's not playing Blue Eyes. He's playing an Umbral Horror 60 card. Actually, not 60. 58 card deck. Uh, which is quite interesting. I'm going to go ahead and... I can Marauding Captain into the Barrier Statue, which is actually kind of crazy. And I think I'm going to actually do that. Oh uh, yeah, I'm going to Marauding Captain. Yep. Barrier statue. I didn't read a single card he had on his board like a moron, but it's fine. We'll do that and let's read what he's got. This lets him float, but we have the barrier statue. That's fine. This lets him special summon, but we have barrier statue. So let's enter the battle phase. First things first, attack over that. His effect can't trigger unless he has fire monsters. He doesn't. Uh, fire barrier statue has been absolutely saving our ass. Fire barrier statue, Vijam the Cubic Seed. And there can only be one have been the absolute, like the Michael Jordan of our run. Uh, they've been absolutely insane. And he's going to gain life points, which isn't good for us because he gains life points every single end phase. So that's definitely not good because we have very low power output right now, but it's not the end of the world. And the absolute, the, yeah, the, this card's been the goat of our run. All right, this is actually amazing because we... <laughs> I want to draw him more often. But this is really amazing because we have the attraction wheel. So when he goes battle phase to attack over the uh, the barrier statue. So now he's in battle phase. I'm going to activate the wheel here and attach it to this monster. And I would usually have done that on attack declaration. But the only reason I'm not doing that on attack declaration is... Uh, okay, he's going to do it anyway. So we're going to go ahead and use the wheel. Flip his attack and defense. He has zero attack and 1800 defense. So he wipes his own monster there, which is fine by me. Let's see, what do we got? Parallel Twister is not bad, but it doesn't really help us at the moment. So now we can uh, normal summon the Field Commander Ralts. Let me check in my deck. Is there any warrior that we want on top of our deck really badly that's going to help us significantly? Honestly, actually the Dragudi, Dragonius. Dragonius is actually pretty good. So actually that card might be... I'm going to go ahead and place that on the top of our deck. Uh, because if we add, yeah, we place this on top of our deck, um, it can actually protect the barrier statue. So now we go to battle, attack a couple of times. X this out. This, this GG companion has really actually been helping me a lot, like, insanely on my run. Because it's just an overlay and it just lets me look at my deck mid-battle, or mid-duel, which is actually kind of crazy. 
If we if we if we get that Dragonius, I think we basically win the duel. This barrier statue uh, will carry us, but it just depends if he can out the the barrier statue. If he can out the barrier statue, uh, we lose here. This is a very odd deck. I've never seen anyone play Umbral Horror. I don't even know what Umbral Horror is to be honest with you. Battling Boxer. That's interesting to see. Let's see what he attacks. If he attacks the barrier statue or not. Nope, he's still not attacking the barrier statue. Actually, can he even? Monsters, your, your opponent controls cannot target warrior monsters except this one. But this isn't a warrior, is it? No. So he could have he could have targeted this if he wanted to. Now we can get the uh, Dragonis, Dragonis. And its pendulum effect is at the start of the damage step of a monster you control battles an opponent's monster. Discard one card and becomes half. So his becomes half. So... Um, so this is where we kind of uh, we can parallel twister get rid of his monster and then attack directly I think we can do that but I don't know what this back row is but we can always fall back on the cubic seat if everything else goes wrong honestly so I think I'm going to parallel twister and I'm going to go for game here I'm going to send this to the graveyard I think I'm going to get rid of this battling boxer but again I can get rid of this too but I'm going to play I'm going to play aggressively because you guys have told me to play aggressively, right? You guys tell me to play aggressively, so I'll play aggressively. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I am going to play aggressively. So I'm going to summon the Dragonius, and I'm going to go to battle phase. And I'm going to listen to you guys, and I'm going to play aggressively. You know, normally, I would have played around maybe the Mirror Force, played around this back row card. But this time, I listened to you guys. Look at that. That worked. I got to listen to you guys. Some of you guys are a little too smart. Uh, that was an interesting deck. I have no idea what that was, but I'll, I'll, I'll live with it. All right, we've got no legacy tickets, but we've got the Death Scissors, which is a machine monster. When it destroys a monster by battle, and uh, your opponent's monsters equal to the level of the destroyed monster. So we inflict times the level. This guy's a thousand attack. Who are you attacking? Who are you attacking, bro? Uh, nothing good, but he might go in our machine deck. For those of you wondering, this is what this guy was playing. He's playing like a giant Exceed Era deck, like a bunch of like, these are like the leftover archetypes of the Exceed Era. It's like Battling Boxers, Umbral Horror. Uh, we've got, yeah, Battling Boxers again, Fire Hand, Ice Hand, Prominence Hand, Scepters, the Star Sept Seraph Scepters. Um, we've got these dragons that are like normal summon level eight. It's just a bunch of just like, I don't know. It's like, it's like, a bunch of stuff from the 5Ds era, just, not 5Ds, the 5Ds from the uh, Exceed era, just all like spilled into one deck, but unfortunately not good enough for to beat us. Back in the shop, nothing beats the excitement of opening a Master Pack. Let's see what we get here. Again, there are so many commons, so many rares, so many, there's so many cards in this game that could help us significantly. This is our second copy of Clear Effector that we cannot use. Uh, Ghost Trick, don't have any Ghost Tricks, that's not going to be usable. Uh, this is a speedroid card. We have one other speedroid card, and I don't think that one helps. Okay, so this card actually isn't, like, horrific at all. Might go in our machine deck. Uh, this card is a low scale, which is already really good, right? Um, it can make our monster change from defense to attack, and then it can't be destroyed by battle. Um, and then on top of that, it has a, that's its pendulum effect. And then it has another effect where if this card's normal summon, we can add any speedroid monster from our deck to our hand, which we do have that speedroid monster that when we take damage, we get to, uh, yeah, when we take damage, uh, we get to a uh, special summon it. So this card overall is actually not that bad, but I don't actually think that this fits in our deck at the moment of me saying this, but overall, this actually isn't that bad of a card. The Wicked Eraser. Okay, this card is definitely, without a doubt, interesting. <laughs> um, if we had a way to, like, trigger the destruction of this card in our hand, I would 1 million percent play it. I remember I used to play this um, in Fire Kings. But wait, 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 like, two, like, probably 2018. I used to play this in Fire Kings, maybe even earlier. I used to use it with a Dragonic Diagram. If we could trigger the destruction of this card in our hand, it's actually a pretty good card because it board wipes everything. Also, it's three tributes and it gains a thousand for all cards. All cards are opponent controls times 1,000. So if they have five monsters, it's 5,000 attack. If they have 10 cards, it has 10,000 attack. So it can actually be quite good. And that doesn't even include field spells and... Uh, extra monster zones and stuff like that so it, it can it can uh, the attack can definitely get run up here and it can destroy itself and then pop everything i am actually maybe considering playing this 
as crazy it is. Another Heratic card. This is probably going in our Dragon deck. Okay, this card's actually not bad, and it's probably going to be playable in our Dragon deck. I'm actually more than likely going to act, going to play this Heratic Dragon. Uh, the Wicked Eraser I might play too. Dark Alligator. This card is actually not bad, but we don't have enough Reptiles. I would have played it, but if we had a good searchable Reptile that we could use, I'd probably play this. Uh, this card is another Fabled card, so we have now multiple Fabled cards. Infernity Patriarch, um, you can special summon if it's the only card in your hand. This is basically a free special summon if our hand is empty, which if we had a deck that like used rank 4s or something, this could be fairly good, but as of right now, it's not that good. Uh, so overall, I am playing the Heratic Dragon of Nut, um, and then the uh, Wicked Eraser, I, I kind of want to play it, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of like a god card in a certain way, and it's 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 actually, it's a payoff, because we have, a lot of time we stall, and we stall, and we stall, and we have nothing to go into, this might be a card worth going into, now the problem is this is three tributes, I'm getting rid of Arm Dragon, I just thought about it, screw Arm Dragon level 5, I'm getting rid of him, I'm playing Wicked Eraser instead, alright, so this is the best cards we have, um, I'm honestly going to be getting rid of something in the best cards we have. We still have the Kuraz, we still have the Amazonist Queen, we have this guy, he's kind of new, new to the team in the best cards we have. I do want to play the Wicked Eraser in this deck, so I'm going to get rid of something here, temporarily. I might get rid of the Santa Claus, just because it doesn't, uh, I, I think I'm just going to leave this at 41 cards until I can decide what to do. And then in terms of the new deck, let's go back to the new deck. We have the Dragon Warrior deck. I want to play this Heratic Dragon of Nut. Uh, so, or knew it. <laughs> I'm going to play him. I, I want to get rid of something here. I'm going to get rid of the Arm Dragon level 5 just because he is an absolute brick lately. Uh, I, every time I open him, I'm just in, in, a, in a depressive state. Uh, so this is going to be our deck from here. All right, so we just uh, lost the coin flip i don't know what he chose to go first or second i didn't actually uh i wasn't paying attention uh but we uh we lost the coin flip and he's chosen to do something he's got chinese letters and he's got the rabbit mate usually this means self tk usually it's either ftk as in we lose in one turn or self tk as in he loses in one turn we'll see which one it is we're hoping for self self tk i'm trying to break a record today with most packs open uh we'll see if we can actually do it he's got toll which is off to a not so great start. It might be just traditional classic burn. I don't know what it actually is, but um, I actually like this card. This is actually a new version of Toll. I forget what the new one is, but basically you have to send a card from your hand to the graveyard in order to attack. And you specifically have to send. So if you have like a card that uh, prevents sending from great, like, like Macrocosm or something, you just can't, your opponent can't even attack. That card would be kind of cool to play. There's a lot of cards that are Revival Jam. This is a lot. This is a foolishness going on right now. <laughs> revival Jam. Toll. There's an interesting situation going on on our hands. All right. We've got, we've got some plays here. We've got the Heretics. We've got Twister. I'm, I'm going to save the Twister just in case our opponent has a uh, some other kind of foolishness back here. Uh, but we're going to summon the Heratic. Yes, we want to summon the Heratic without tributing. Which choice do we have? We're going to special summon that out. We do have the Twister, like I said, just in case they have something going on back there. Uh, we do have the Twister. Like this. Okay, uh, we're just going to limit our Spawn Trap card activations before we accidentally blow up this giant tower. This guy is playing like... This is actually kind of interesting. He's playing like a... He's playing like a deck from like 2004. Like this is a time capsule of a deck. I'm actually kind of, I'm actually kind of impressed to a certain, literally this is like, this guy just like, like opened a bunch of Magician's Force packs or something. And he's going to, another Tower of Babel. Okay. This is, this is a very convoluted, and this is precisely why I saved the Twister. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and special summon this. Tribute this dragon, special summon, activate that, so now we can summon uh, the Gaia. The Gaia will come out with zero attack, I believe, so we'll just set it in defense mode, I think. Uh, just because we can't really attack with it as zero. And then we just go to battle. He's going to burn us for 500, but that's not the end of the world. And the next turn, he can bring his monster back. Yep, that's fine. 
We're going to set the twister. And if one of the babbles go off, we can just pop it. And you can move the spell counters over to other cards. So I guess this is kind of like it just generates three counters that once per turn you can move other places. So you can put it on this tower or this tower. But we can just destroy either tower with Twister at any time if he threatens us in any way. And we actually have a generic rank six here if we wanted to. We have the Heretic, uh, the Heretic Dragon of Sue. And then we have, we don't have any generic sixes though. We only have generic fives. Um, but it's, it's fine though. We have... We have a decent situation here. A lot of his cards do just nothing, which is good for us. He has a very slow deck. He has, he has one, two, three cards do nothing. Uh, this, we have to pay 500 to attack, whatever. We're up in life points, so everything's fine right now. He's going to move some counters. It, lit it literally doesn't matter. Like, if this d gets to a decent amount of counters, we just pop it. It doesn't even matter. He summons this in defense mode, which means he can't even... Uh, yeah, he summoned in defense mode, so that means he can't even do anything. Maybe this is some kind of a a slower self TK deck. I don't even know what to say. Oh, okay, so yeah, this is some kind of uh, slow slow self TK, I guess. I don't know. I guess it's actually kind of, in a certain way, this is a better self TK deck. And the reason this is actually a better self TK deck is because it actually occasionally wins, and it summons monsters and activates traps, and it's actually, uh, in a lot of ways, a better self TK deck. Now the other the other issue is how do we out this dude? <laughs> this this guy might actually be tough to out because he's uh, he's got a lot of attack. Parry knights, yep. Summon out the parry knights. I'll just summon it in defense for now. Amazement train's not bad actually. Amazement train can help us against the. Uh, Oh yeah, Amazement Train's pretty good. We'll put out the Barrier Statue right here. And now he can't summon back the Revival Jam. This train will help us because it can move his monster out of the way for us. So we'll go and attack. Pay 500 to attack over the this thing right here. Which is fine. Get rid of it. He can activate the effect. Even though... He can still activate it even though his monster's not going to be coming back because of the Barrier Statue. Yeah, so it's not going to summon anyway. Main phase two. Uh, we set the amazement train. And yeah, we can just move his monster out of the way. He can attack over us or we can move his monster out of the way. Either way, during the standby phase, he's not getting the revival jam back because of the barrier statue. This barrier statue has been coming in clutch. I think every game we won today is barrier statue in some way. It's just been this card's just been carrying today. Uh, I mean, a lot of cards could have... We have a lot of good cards in our deck now, which is kind of interesting. But this is like a Dragon Warrior deck, and it's like been like... Barrier Statue of of, of, of Inferno has been like the, the, our, our god card today. He's going to move one of these over. It's just fine with me. Probably move it over here. But it, honestly, if he activates another spell, he just, <laughs> he just destroys himself. I'm not going to activate any more spells. I have traps to activate, so... We have the Amazement Thrill Ride... That can't summon because of the barrier statue. I think if we can, uh, next turn, if we can, we'll move this thing out of the way and we just win. Because we have enough, uh, this is the only, like, unknown that can be bad for us. But other than that, I think we're, we're good here. Now he's attacking over the, it's fine that he's attacking over the barrier statue because, like I said, uh, uh, because his monster would be banished until the end phase and then it would just return anyway so i might as well just move it out of the way during my turn and then attack over his stuff i i honestly don't i hope that this is not a threat i hope that it's not a threat dragonius is pretty good so here's what we do we activate the amazement thrill ride move this thing out of the way until the end phase if we can if our effect if, if his uh, effect resolves if our effect resolves, we can move this out of the way until the end phase and then attack twice and, and basically close the game off. Actually, I'm not even going to summon the... What does this do? Mirror wall. Ooh. So it makes everything halved. But it's fine because we have the uh, twister. So that's it. Now we know everything that he has, we win the duel. We know literally every single card that he has in play. Uh, this activates when there's four counters. This during... Your turn, you can place. Okay, so now we know what everything does. 
during the standby phase, 2,000, or this card is destroyed. Okay, so we have Twister to destroy the mirror wall. Now this gets a counter, this gets a counter, but they only activate with the four counters. This is 2,300 attack, and he has 1,300 life points. So essentially here, we win the duel. As long as nothing random activates out of the deck, we win the duel. There we go. Nice, nice, clean, clean game, and we, uh, we won that one. All right, we got one legacy pack. This is our opponent's deck. Really interesting deck. I don't know if this is self decay or not. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, I'm really like not sure what's going on here. I don't know what the win condition is. Maybe the win condition is to burn us with. I guess it is like a slower self decay deck. I think that's what this deck is. It's actually much more interesting to play into, uh, against than the regular self decay. So overall, it's like self decay if self decay was invented in like. If self DK was invented in, in, in 2004, this is self DK. All right, so we might break a record for most legacy packs open in one episode, or most packs open in one episode, which I'm excited about. Here's our master pack. We've got Archfiend Spawned. I don't think this is good. Its stats aren't good. It's got to like roll dice and stuff. Evil Eye Retribution. We actually do have some Evil Eye cards, which is cool, because all we have to do is control an Evil Eye monster. Um, and then we can negate a Splatter Trap card that's actually not bad. And then if Selene is in your spawn. Uh, this card cannot be negated. Okay, so this card's not bad. We do have a decent amount of Evil Eye cards. It might be usable one day. Uh, this is a Phantom Knight's Raid Raptor card. Uh, this isn't really usable for us right now, but it might be one day. The Ashaleon. Interesting. All right, this is more Reptile support. Not, like, terrible, but, like, we don't have enough of it. More reptile support. Okay, we just like the game wants us to play reptiles all of a sudden. We got a reptile card last pack. We got this reptile card, this reptile card, and we got the uh the Ogdoatic spell card last time, the one that sends to the deck. So we've got a lot of reptile cards. Wow, this card's actually really not bad. Like this is like so it can be destroyed by battle. And then if it's normal summon during the next uh during the standby phase of the summoning player's next turn. We can tribute this in special summon three level four reptile or rock monsters from our hand or deck. Banish them during the end phase. I mean, if we could summon normal summon this during our opponent's turn, it would maybe be good. But the fact that it can't destroy a battle is, is actually quite nice. This is a pearly card. We have one other pearly card, so we can't really use that. Uh, Warrior of Atlantis. This guy's the goat, but we don't have Legendary Ocean. Um, and then we've got the Fantastic stringborg all right this card is actually not bad it's a uh this is actually removal and it's a machine monster which is pretty good also the monsters used for the tribute summon of this card are returned to the hand so whatever we tribute we get resources back for it um and on top of that you discard a card return all cards your opponent controls in this card's column to the hand so this card I'm not going to lie, this card's actually kind of good. This card's better than some of... This. I'm honestly probably going to replace the Zabor because he has not been coming up whatsoever. And this card is actually better against Eternal Soul than Zabor because sometimes they protect the Eternal Soul. And if they don't protect the Eternal Soul, we're actually giving our opponent resources, which is really annoying. I actually think I might play this card instead. Now, the only thing is this doesn't activate on summon, which is annoying, but this does recur the resources that you use for the tribute summon. So if like, sometimes I, I don't want to tribute Vigom because I'm sitting on a Vigom. And if I tribute Vigom, I can actually get him back to my hand, which is actually quite cool. So I might finally replace Zaborg. Uh, so overall, interesting hand, like interesting cards, but I think the only playable card is the fantastic strong uh, Stringborg for now. All right, we've got one legacy ticket. Let's open it, see what we get here. Uh, there's supposed to be a rare or higher in this. Let's see what we get. Hopefully, it's something cool. We've got Crawling Dragon number two. It's a dinosaur. It's not a dragon. The title is a total lie because if it was a dragon, I would possibly have played it because when you tribute um, one of the Heratic monsters, you can actually special summon. Uh, when you tribute one of the Heratic monsters, you can actually uh, special summon a normal dragon from the deck, and I would probably summon a normal dragon from the deck uh, but unfortunately this is a uh not a normal dragon we've got old mind all right this is really not that good of a card unfortunately all right so in best cards we have i'm going to be replacing the karaz for the 
the strong string borg right now um and then yeah i think that's what i'm going to save in this deck and then i don't think i'm going to make any changes whatsoever in the best in the dragon warrior deck that we've been using today and then machine support i'm obviously going to add the string borg over because i actually think it's quite good um so that might be interesting uh to see and then maybe the speedroid stuff too it's it's not bad we'll add that to the machine support that's kind of building in the background all right next game we just won the coin flip chose to go first let's see how this goes this curse of dragon we've been seeing a lot of curse of dragon uh not not the worst opening hand not the worst definitely could get some actually it's honestly not even not like the worst it's actually kind of decent <laughs> if i'm being honest uh, you've got zubaba which is a normal summon we've got twister which is removal we've got dimension slice which is uh decent and then we've got the iron dragon which we can chain in a column and i i think it, dimensions life will miss timing if we do it with iron dragon uh but it's fine so i think i'm just gonna normal summon the zubaba and then i will set twister and i'm gonna set the dimension slice this is we're playing in this column so hopefully our opponent will because most people have some people have the auto set so things set like automatically at the beginning of the game so they may have not even changed it to manual so if they set a card it'll just set here and we might be able to use the Iron Dragon. And I don't know if Iron Dragon will trigger the Dimension Slice. Because it is a special summon. But Dimension Slice can miss timing. Because it says 1A monster is special summon. So it has to be the last thing happening has to be the monster getting summoned. And this thing pops on summon. So it might miss timing. We'll see how it is. Oof. We get a free win. I was just about to say the Chinese name. The rabbit. So I guess we're getting a free win. I don't mind getting the free win. Like I said, my thing is I want I want I want some new packs, man. I want to play. I want some new packs. I'm so excited. I, I'm trying to break a record for packs in this one episode, because uh, I don't know how many we've opened already. How many have we opened since? Uh, I think we've probably four. But I want I want to break a new pack record one thousand percent. I'm so excited for that. All right, that's it. We just won another game. Uh, I'll accept it. I don't care. It's a free win. Uh, I, I love opening the packs. It's one of my favorite parts. Uh, let's see. We rank up into gold three, which is insane. Uh, this is why, you know, when I, when I make a tier list and people tell me they're in gold, it's like, I, I don't even know what to tell you guys. Uh, so we're going to go to shop. Let's see. Awesome. Let's get this master pack opened. One master pack. I think it was one legacy pack. I didn't see how many it was. Maybe two. There's no hollows based on what I'm seeing. But like I said, there's so many. Like, there are commons that would really help our deck. Ghost Rig Doll does not help our deck. Actually, it might. Let me see. All right. So this isn't like terrible during the end phase. It flips everything face up. Uh, but I, I actually, you know, I mean, during the end phase, it flips everything face down, which actually can be good against like Chaos Max because it's non-targeting face down. But like, I don't think that actually helps as much as we want it to. Oaf Dragon is another card that we have to add to our Pendulum Pile that's building in the background of all of this. Uh, this card isn't bad. We actually have... The, is our monster a Gagaga or, or... No, I don't think it's a Gagaga. I think it's like a Dododo or whatever. Di Dinomorphia Brute. I don't think I've ever seen anyone ever use this card. Yeah, I don't I don't think I've ever used a Dino, seen a Dinomorphia player use that card before. Uh, this card's actually pretty good if we had counter traps, but we don't have counter traps, and that kind of sucks. Um, yeah, if yeah, you gain a thousand every time a counter trap is activated. If we have sanctuary in the sky, we destroy a card. In addition to that, we don't have a counter trap there. No way, that is actually really good. That is actually really good because we we needed that. Um, now we have another heretic piece. Now the problem is we don't have any rank eights to make, so like we can summon this out. And then it's out. <laughs> and it's a zero attack monster. That's crazy that we pulled it. It really is crazy because it's a rare. And out of all the random ass cards we could have pulled, we pulled this. But like that, this just doesn't do anything for us because again, we have no rank eights. It would have been crazy if we could make the rank eights, but right now that doesn't do anything. And then we got another pearly card. Uh, so this is a card for the future. And then we've got we've got a few different uh normal mod. It's crazy. We've got now five heretic cards. It's kind of incredible. Like I said, at, at the time, I don't think there's anything here that we can actually use. Um, 
target a card in your pendulum zone, destroy it, draw a card. I don't think that's going to be... We can use this, technically speaking, with... If we have, like, a slow pendulum deck, this actually wouldn't be too bad. If we played more pendulums, I would run this. Uh, because, obviously, they get effects from being destroyed, and then we can accumulate things. We do play the uh, Dragonies. If you pop Dragonies, you get the search, and then on top of that... Um, you get the draw, so you get the search and you get the draw. That would be nice, and it's continuous. It's every single turn. Uh, but again, it's just a little bit, a little bit slow, um, especially for what we have right now. But the dragon pile that we're building, like the uh, the magician pile that we're building in the background, is kind of nice. All right, let's open these legacy tickets. I guess we have two. One is ignite. That's not bad. We can actually search this. Uh, we pulled a card that searches a fire warrior earlier, so now we can actually search this, and it's a warrior. This is actually a perfect card in a certain way for us, uh, because we can search it off the Dragonies, we can search it off the a Magic Key card, uh, we can search it off of uh, the Equip card that we pulled, which was the it searches a fire warrior. We have a lot of different ways to search this card, but like it doesn't really do anything for us other than summon itself. Um, at this point, I think it, it, it it's a good card, though. It's it's good to keep in the background. I just wish its stats were a little bit better. And then we've got the Vortex the Whirlwind. And as always, every time we pull, every single time that we, for whatever reason, every time we pull a uh, Synchro Monster, there's always some specific things. So this is a Tuner and a Wing Beast Monster, which we don't play any Wing Beast Monsters in our Dragon Warrior deck. Um, and... We do have the Samorg, the little Samorg that bounces on summon, but again, I don't even know if that's worth it. It's a level 4, and then we need a level 1 tuner. If this card is destroyed by battle sent to the grave, you can special summon a Wing Beast from your deck. As of right now, I don't think that really helps, but it's something to definitely keep in mind in the background. Uh, Paladin of Cursed Dragon. I mean, this card's a 1900 normal summon. That That's good. If they happen to be playing zombies, I guess that doubles as something good. It, it's not a bad card. It's a, it's it's a it's a nineteen hundred normal summon. I, I guess that that is that is actually a decent being nineteen hundred or a normal summon is decent. Now the problem is uh, this will replace a card in like our old deck, uh, but in our new deck, like I said, we don't, it doesn't really help our new deck. And then this is actually a good too. This is a free special summon nineteen hundred free special summon. Uh, by banishing an insect, you could special summon this card. Again, if we did some kind of an insect deck, this would maybe be good with Jirai Gumo. Some of the other insects, it would be cool. But as of right now, I don't think it's going to be really that good for us. Uh, Paladin, I don't think is really that good for us. All right, next game. We've been getting a lot of, like, for the future pulls, which is kind of... Uh, I'm not unhappy. It's just it's just a little bit... Uh, I don't want to say... It's, it's not even really, like, bad. It's just a lot of for the future stuff. Uh our hand's not bad. We've got the Aluber. We've got the Guard Dragon Cataclysm, which is essentially popping two cards. We've got the Dragoni, Dragonies, uh, Dragoodies, and then we've got the Fires of Doomsday. I really need a Link Monster for this to like be really good. I think we just... Do we even set Aluber? Set Aluber? Do we summon it? What's its stats? Uh, we might as well summon the Aluber. Uh, summon the Guard Set the Guard Dragon Cataclysm. Set the Fires. Um... Field Commander Ralts. Uh, I could activate this just to have, like, protection, I guess. But I don't think we need to do that. I think we just pass. I think this, this should be good enough. Guard Dragon Cataclysm. We have some interruptions. We have um, the Fires of Doomsday to protect ourselves for a little while. Like I said, I really want to make use of the Fires of Doomsday more than it is. Like, a good generic Link monster would be really awesome for the Fires of Doomsday. Oh my god, self TK again. Dude, it's been non-stop. Like, self TK, this, I, we actually might be breaking a pack record today. It's actually kind of crazy. Somehow we always draw Curse of Dragon. It's incredible. But like I said, the whole point is we're just going to do some damage here. Uh, Field, Field Commander Ralts just sets a card. I don't think it's a point. This is like the standard cookie cutter self TK deck, which is, I, I don't even know how these people get into gold. How do you get into gold playing self TK? I guess because it's a bot. Eventually they play each other and then like they maybe push each other into, into gold. I don't know how they do it, but I have no idea how they do it. How do, how do self TK even get into gold? Like I know gold's not difficult to get into. They have to just be playing each other and then they just, whoever self TKs first gets to, 
Whoever self DK second gets to uh, rank t rank up. All right, that's game. Easy game. Uh, more self DK. I, I I can't even I can't even be mad. Like I said, it's, you get free packs, and this is one of the funnest parts of all of this. Uh, how many legacy packs? Two legacy packs again. All right, let's open this master pack. We've got a super rare this time, or better. Hopefully, we get something awesome. Right on the first pack, Psy Blocker. Okay, and and it's a hollow. This is like really lackluster, S like stupid lackluster. Like this is decent because you can like essentially like prevent something from activating, but its stats suck. It's not a tuner. It's just a very lackluster card. That's unusable. Uh, this I think this works with Majestic cards, so. I don't think it's usable. Uh, this is a Fire King card. All right, so this is like not usable for us. Shark Fortress, two level fives. We have so much level five support. It's crazy. So this card's actually really not that bad. If we can make it, we'll use it. But uh, we have such a small route that allows us to special summon level, rank five monsters. But we have like, I swear, I swear we have like five rank five monsters. It's, it's actually kind of crazy. We need to pull a Cyber Dragon. Uh, Ad Ad Emancipator Friends isn't a bad card at all. If we had more rocks, I would play it. It locks us into rocks, but again, it's not a bad card. I would actually possibly play that. This is our second copy of number 64, uh, Ronin Raccoon. Unfortunately, we have more of it than we do of monsters that can summon it. And then Ebon Illusion Magician, which is a generic rank 7. I don't think we have any capacity. What is this pack? It's like all of these generic XC monsters for levels that we just we are, are not in circulation for us. And it works with a rank six spellcaster monster. So if I think it's N N Norito, the moral leader, if we ever pull that, we can use this as material. So that would be uh, quite decent. And then this one's not bad. This one I remember isn't that bad because it's when a, when a spellcaster monster declares an attack, a spellcaster normal monster, we can uh, target a card opponent controls, banish it. But we just have no way to really summon this. We have no way to summon this. We do have somewhat of a way to summon this. So this is going in the extra deck. Um, other than that, I think this, this was a little bit of a bust. All right, legacy tickets. Let's see what we get. We got a uh, rare or higher. It could be anything. It's just as long as it's a rare or higher. Flash Assailant. <laughs> Um, if I had skill drain, I'd probably play this, but unfortunately I don't think I play this. This is from starter deck, starter deck, what Kaiba dark chorus. This is interesting. 3000 attack once per turn. Okay. So this card really isn't even that bad. I'm honestly considering playing this in our dragon deck. Now the issue is this is like, it's just, it's, 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 it's honestly just not bad. It's not good. It's just not bad. Um, it basically, if, if our opponent activates a spell card and resolves it, we get the special summon dark monster from the graveyard. That's it. But it's 3000 attack and it's two tributes and it does more than our other two tribute monsters. I don't know if we play this card, but it's definitely better than dark. Ar I mean, it's not even better than arm dragon level five. Honestly, it's because it's a, it's arm dragon level five is at least a one tribute monster. It's a level five and we have every rank five that's ever been created. So it might actually not be that great. If we had cards like Reasoning or something, I would definitely play that card, though, but we don't. Fairy Archer. This card is honestly not even that bad. If I had more light monster, more light monsters, I would actually maybe run this. Because we have a little bit of a stall deck, and there's there have been games in the past where the game has been really, really close. Like, we're down to, like, 300 light points, 200 life points, and we lose. And something like this would actually be kind of decent. What in the world? I've never seen... Who is this? Gary from Spongebob? Ready for war? What the hell is this thing? Has anybody ever seen this card? Where the hell is this from? That's a weird one. All right, so the only card I'm changing, I'm putting in the shark for sure. I, I don't think I put anything else in. Like, this is like not... If this was a warrior, I'd play it. Like, straight up, I would play this. Uh, but I don't think we have enough lights and stuff. I do play the new shark. I'm going to get rid of something. Look at all these rank 5, rank 5, rank 5, rank 5, rank 5. What is going on in here? What's all these rank 5s? I'm going to cut Numeronius. I swear to God, I cut this card every time. And it somehow works its way back into the deck. Uh, but yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, it's it's it, this episode, we haven't been pulling a lot of, like, 
main deck stuff. We've been pulling some extra deck stuff, which is actually... I, I still haven't made Zeta, but, like, things are moving. All right, so we just lost a coin flip. This guy has been in our hand non-stop. Non-stop we've seen this dude. Our hand is... I'm going to be honest with you. This is an iffy hand. Wow, we're playing against element savers. And I think we might actually lose. This is going to be embarrassing. Every deck that I make fun of during the tier lists, I've been I've lost to Ghost Trick. I've lost to Familiar Possessed, uh, Char otherwise known as Charmers. If I lose to this, I, I don't even know what I'm going to do with my life. This guy just got out of solo mode. He's ready to go. All right, so this guy is actually really like good against us. I not a great card, but he's good against us. Like drawing that doesn't even help. Uh, but we do have the out. We do have the out, though, for sure. Okay, we do have some plays. We do have some plays. One thousand percent. I'm just gonna. I just have to do a little bit of math in my small brain, and I think we do have a way to do this. Okay. So we're going to. Special summon Vice Dragon. Okay, okay. We, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. So first things first. We attach this in this column to this dude. Uh, next, we special summon the Vice Dragon right here in attack mode because we are going to be able to attack soon. Uh, we set the power frame. We special summon the Iron Dragon Tiamon or whatever it's called special summon it right here to pop this column and now we get to destroy all these cards banish that automatically he somehow has protection I don't know what that's about and now we can summon the photon crusher this has some kind of protection I don't know what the, what's this protection for okay we need to get rid of this field spell ASAP this field spell is no joke uh, I shouldn't have summoned this in attack mode but it's whatever it's fine because we have the power frame. Okay, I think I'm going to go into the Sioux ship. I think we have no choice. We always draw Curse of Dragon, which is annoying. We also could have gone into our rank 5 engine here too, but you know, we got to be realistic. Uh, I think we go into the Sioux ship. Summon the boy out. And the Sioux ship will help us pop the field spell. This deck needs this field spell really badly to function so we're going to do some battle damage here and then we're going to activate the sioux ship to pop that field spell that field spell is no joke against us and then we attack directly and then we have the power frame that was all things considered that was not bad that was not bad we banished this card that card was like this, this dude was like chaos max essentially this man the Element Saber and Mana. This thing was like a Chaos Max. No, it can't be destroyed by battle. Can't be destroyed by card. Actually, as a matter of fact, Chaos Max Dragon can be destroyed by battle. It was actually maybe better than a Chaos Max. That was a little bit of a... That was a dramatic... Oof! Retreat. Retreat. Now, if only we could somehow summon Curse of Dragon. We go into rank 5 plays. If we're going into rank 5 plays, we might as well... We might as well be playing. Like, oof, Man... What a hand. All right, so I don't know how much defense this has, but I imagine it's probably a decent amount. And a 1,000 attack monsters probably not getting over it. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead, enter battle, Sioux ship, and then Vice Dragon. Yep, smart choice. There we go, Vice Dragon. I want to wrap this game up, though. I really need to wrap this game up. We're going to set this. Uh, next turn, maybe we go into a rank 5. Our first rank 5. This is unbelievable. All right. We have Volcanos Volcanosaurus, which can end us the game, possibly, because this does burn damage. Salamandra, I'm probably not going to summon. Uh, then we've got the Shark that attacks twice. That's no joke, so if he leaves nothing on the board... Oof! This might be a wrap. No way. We might actually go into uh, a rank 5 place here. Alright, so we, we tribute Vigion. Let me do some math here. We definitely tribute summon. We tribute the Vigil. This is unbelievable. This is a crazy combination of things happening right now. Vice Dragon, Curse of Dragon, the Sioux Ship. It's like Hogwarts out here. It's too much going on. All right. Let's. I think we go into the Shark. Let me just read this. Okay. So we go into the Shark and we win the game. 
This co this shark came in already. I just pulled this thing. The shark just got here. I was just complaining. I can't I can't do X. I can't do rank five plays. I was just complaining. Uh, detach the curse of dragon. Target itself to attack directly. Actually, if this thing attacks twice, oh, this is a heart. This is a once per turn down here. That'd be crazy if we could pop two cards. And now we just attack for game. Attack. Attack. Wow, that was like... That was like a YCS level play. Did you guys see that? That was like... I think we need a... Wow. That was like when, when, when Kaiba beat that guy in one turn with Obelisk. Alright, we've got a Legacy ticket and five gems. And we've got... This is a... Uh, this is an insect. Keep this in mind in the background. Because we've been pulling a lot of insects recently. Alright, let's get our Master Pack. We got another hollow. Hopefully it hasn't been it's not the hollows that we've been pulling, because we've been pulling some goofy hollows. No one even thought we're hollow. <laughs> What's in here? Whoa, code generator. This card's actually pretty good. Yeah, this card is actually kind of good. If we pull a code talker, we could do something with this. I don't know if we have one. But this is actually a decent card to definitely keep for the future. We have some Machina cards. This is not bad. This is actually not bad with our with our existing Machina. I think who do we have again? I don't remember who it is. It's not Gear Frame. I forget which Machina card we have, but this is a nice little recursive loop actually, and it makes it gain twelve hundred attack. That's not bad. Uh, Emerald Bird is not a bad card actually. You can send a Luna Light card from your uh, from your hand to the graveyard, draw a card. This isn't bad. We do have the Luna Light Bottle. I, I remember that. Umbral Horror. We actually played against this card. Uh, we don't have any Umbral Horror Monsters in our deck other than that, so that's not going to happen. Synchron Explorer. This card's not bad again, it's just we don't have any Synchrons other than itself. This isn't bad, actually. We do have the Marincess Link Monster, and this is essentially any any of the any Fish, Sea Serpent, or Aqua Monster plus this card in our hand is, is that card exactly, so that's actually not bad. Now, let's see. we got a UR and a Super Rare here. Dark World, Dark World Dealings. That's just good. That is our first search power. That is search... I, that, not draw power. That's our first draw power. Our first draw card, Dark World Dealings. Now, the problem is this lets our opponent draw and discard, which can be bad for us. And then on top of that, it uh, not only does it help our opponent draw and discard, which can be bad because it can give them graveyard setup. It also is bad because we don't have any like cards that trigger in the graveyard anyway, so it doesn't really benefit us to really discard anything at this moment. So I, I might not actually play that despite drawing it. And then for the oh my god, oh my god, that's a good card. I don't even need to read that. That is a good card. And it, with with barrier statue in our deck, there can only be one. We get this. Wow. We have like a constructed, it's, it's getting to the point, we have a constructed anti-meta deck. We're going to have a stun deck by the end of all of this. This is a crazy pull. This is like a really, 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 really good pull. This is outrageous. Let's go open those legacy packs. That, they will not be as good as what we just pulled. Could have a heart attack from what we just pulled. I don't want to be extra dramatic and say that's as good as like, as good as like there can only be one, but that's up, that is definitely up there for sure. That is up there. And we contribute their monsters. Who the hell is this psycho? This isn't even that bad, honestly. This isn't even that bad. Uh, but it just doesn't work with our deck. Is that a fiend or a spellcaster or a zombie? A little rough there. Uh, this is not going to work for us at all, Psy Station. All right, so now we're here in the uh, deck building section. Um, I, I think we play the Dark World Dealings. I think we put that in. Uh, but I just don't know what to replace it with, honestly. I, I, I don't, I just don't, I just don't know what to replace it with. And there's a lot of stuff. All right, so we definitely play Crackdown. That's not not a question. We play Crackdown. It's Crackdown plus Barrier Statue is might as well. It's like it's like too much for us. We do have to cut some cards. I might cut Field Commander Roths because like he does search stuff, but he's like, listen, there's a reason he he died in the GX anime. What kind of Yu-Gi-Oh card dies? I think he's gone. He's gone for us. Uh, and then so Crackdown's definitely in there. I think I'm gonna hold off on the Dark World Dealings. 
like it is draw power and that is good but i swear to you like our opponent actually has better like our opponent's gonna have a better deck 99 percent of the time and we mostly win when our opponent bricks and this will unbrick our opponent's hand so this against blue eyes is just an auto loss for us this against dark magician is just an auto like this card is as good as it is in theory in practice it's actually just going to cause us to lose more than we should lose actually so that if for that reason i don't think i'm going to play this card and then of course we've got gary the snail i don't know why this card exists i, I still don't know let's go get uh let's go get one more pack somehow and then and then we'll we'll end this episode all right our hands looking not not too shabby here we've got some heretic stuff we've got joan Perry Knights, Twister, that's not a good sign. We might have to get out of here. We might have to scoop. But it's looking pretty good. Alright, I'm not I'm not beating a constructed spell um spellbook deck. I'm not beating that. Alright, next game we just lost a coin flip. Our hands looking not too shabby, honestly. Like not too shabby at all. But the problem is, oh man, okay, he's got dangers. Hopefully things go very wrong for him. Oh, they did not go wrong for him. He gets to summon the Bigfoot. The problem is every one of these 3,000 attack monsters are tough to out. And we're already going second. Uh, that doesn't help us. We don't have graveyard effects the way he does, which is, again, pretty bad for us. And he's got all of these effects triggering off right now. He's, so he's playing. I don't even know why he chose to go. First of all, why he chose to go first is actually kind of concerning why did he choose to go first why would you go first with the deck that he's playing he has a very like going this is a going second wing dragon of raw deck it's like a danger wing dragon of raw why he's going second i have absolutely no idea uh we have to discard a card here honestly i, I can maybe make some rank five plays so i'll keep that plus it's a special summon this doesn't really do much uh this doesn't really do much but protect our life points if he summons some big monster I actually think the Primal Dragon is probably the best card to discard here. The Wing Dragon of Raw has too many search cards. I'll say that. And a lot of people are on Wing Dragon of Raw right now. Look at this. It's like the Wing Dragon of Raw has two search cards. And then uh, Slifer has like none, which kind of sucks for Slifer. All right, so our opponent didn't do as much as I had hoped. Uh, he, he didn't do as much as I thought he would do. Um, so now we definitely have some plays. I don't I, like Putting Danger Bigfoot on top of his deck, I don't even know if that really is like a good thing to do. And none of them, none of the monsters that we special summon can attack directly because, or can, can't attack because of the true sun god. So we got to keep that in mind. Um, so honestly, how do we play this out? I don't, I don't think that, like putting this on top of his deck won't even like benefit us really. But I guess it'll keep him off the, uh, I mean, I guess we just kind of have to, we have no choice. I think the least important card in our hand right now is the Vice Dragon, actually. So we're going to activate this and put the Danger Bigfoot back on the top of the deck. And then we're going to summon the Aluber. I wish he had a dragon. I would have stolen his monster. But that doesn't really benefit us. So we're just going to go attack over the Danger Suchinoko. And then we'll set the Expendable Die. I'm only setting it because um, just in case we draw into a warrior, we can instantly use it. And then we've got the Fires of Doomsday to protect ourselves a little bit. Now, the problem is we did put the Danger Bigfoot back on top of the deck, which isn't, like, great for us. But at the same time, it, like, hopefully he discards his uh, Winged Dragon of Raw and he never actually successfully is able to summon it. Yep, which is, like, perfect. It's like, I'm dueling Merrick and I'm Yugi. But then again, like I said, it has so much search power that you can just get another one. You can just draw another one. We will be able to summon something off of the uh, damage. Like when he does damage to us, we'll be able to summon parry knights if we want to. But his deck is a little complex. The good thing is he doesn't really have any protection for the winged dragon of raw. So even if he does successfully summon it, he doesn't. He can't really protect it. Because uh, yeah, none of this stuff protects the winged dragon of raw. Okay, great. We're going to be able to summon Parry Knights. And I think we have to trigger the, car, the card to... Just doesn't do it. Alright. I don't think I'm going to use that yet. Alright. Dragodes is not bad. I think we normal summon Dragodes, tribute it, pop, Bigfoot, and then start attacking directly. 
Uh, this is a little bit concerning back here because it's probably a, it's probably the trap card that summons the uh, God Slime, unfortunately. But I mean, do we have a choice, really? I don't think we have a choice. We have to do what we have to do. I mean, what, what, what other plays do we have? We can go into the Sioux Ship, doesn't do anything. We can go into... We can tribute this, pop this, draw a card, hopefully draw something that helps us more than what we have on the field now. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Yep, tribute, pop. Like I said, this could be a, a, a god slime. Uh, yeah, not a god slime, whatever it's called, a, a re reflex slime. And that can be a little bit of a problem, but we do have other outs to the reflex slime. That doesn't really help us right now, but I mean, it's, it's good to keep in the background. What do we have face down still? Dooms fires of doomsday we just enter battle here hopefully the attack goes through but like i said it could be oh he has the this slime this thing is annoying oh i forgot all about this did he add this back did i watch him add this back he pro yeah, i probably added that back and i didn't know all right well we have no more attacks and i have no way to get rid of that right now all right nothing we can do Nothing we can do there, but at least we have uh, Metal Reflex Slime. Alright, I think this duel is actually pretty much over now. He, good thing he doesn't have too much life points, so he won't. He will be able to summon the Winged Dragon of Raw, but he won't be able to do too much with it. And we definitely have ways to play around things. And he's going to summon the Egyptian God Slime, and then he's going to make... He can tribute for the Winged Dragon of Raw. It'll be at least 3,000 attack. And then he's got... I think his whole extra deck is just God Slimes. And then he has 6,200 life points to pay. Which makes you wonder, why didn't he block that attack too? Alright, so we've, we're dealing with our first God here. I think this might be it for us. He's going to pay 61, make it 91. And that is unfortunately not game yet. That is fortunately not game yet. So we might actually be able to... Uh, work this out all right so now we're gonna we took some damage we're gonna summon the parry knights and then of course we do still have the fires of doomsday all right that does not help us but we may be able to trick our opponent here i think i can only target this egyptian god slime right now so, we got to do some quick damage somehow. If we can do some damage, we can win. Let me see. Yeah, I can only target this thing. So, I'm going to attach it to that. And then hopefully our opponent doesn't realize what's going on here and just attacks into us. Hopefully that just happens. I don't even know what effect he even has right now. I don't even know what... Does he have like a hand trap or something? They have like a max C? It's like, oh, big bang shot. Psych, nope. Max C. I, I, how did I predict that? <laughs> how did I predict that? That's incredible. Okay. Now let's uh, let's set some cards and then pass here. So now we know every every card that he has, we know. So let's just let's just end here. Hopefully he attacks with this Egyptian god slime, not realizing what's going on here. Otherwise, we bought ourselves some time because right now the only thing that can attack is this Winged Dragon of Raw. If he attacks with this, he just loses the game. So that's going to be like a very, very dramatic win for us. Reactor Slime is an interesting card in this situation. He's going to get some tokens and then he locked out of anything with Tribute Summons. So we're good with that. Yeah, our best bet is that he just, he just falls for this foolishness. But honestly, though, his... his Oh my god, no way. No way. <laughs> this card is like the ultimate, like, cheese win. Like, nobody knows what it does. Nobody knows how it works. It's just the freest win ever. And we won. <laughs> that's insane. Alright, that's insane. I, it, it's just the, the stupidest cheese win ever. And it, we should not have won that game. We should not have won that game in any way. He had 9,000 attack god card on his board, and we won that game. All right, let's go open our last pack. Two legacy packs. Pretty cool there. All right, here we go. We got the master pack. 
last master pack of the episode. This is the most master packs I've, I've ever opened in one episode. It's an, I don't even know how many we opened. I like lost track. We just keep winning. Wow. After what we pulled last time is pretty crazy. Battling Boxer. We're building up a little a little series of this, which is pretty good. So this isn't even that bad, but we just ha don't have any ex Exceed Monsters that are Battling Boxers. Return of the Normal. This really isn't even that bad. We, with Curse of Dragon, this isn't even that bad. It, it, can, it can clear every monster under 2,000 attack. Um, but we don't summon it that often. Okay, Small World. Small World in our deck can essentially search anything. <laughs> our deck is a disaster. We have all types of things that link to other things. It's incredible. I can't... Like, I'm not as smart as you guys. You guys will probably come up with stuff that I can search with other combinations of things, but this is kind of a... I'm not going to lie, this is kind of a crazy card to pull. In a deck like ours, I, I the combinations that this deck that can can accomplish with this card is actually kind of crazy. I, I don't have the brain to figure that out at this moment, but that is a trick star, two trick stars. Damn it, not generic. Uh, Omni Dragon Brotar. Wow. And we have a generic dragon deck. So we have now this. We have all those other dragons. This is actually kind of crazy. So yeah, if a monster you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can special summon this card from the hand. This card is special summon target. One face-up monster. Discard one card. Add one monster from your deck to your hand with that exact same type and attribute, but a different name. That is actually pretty good. This can search any dark dragon. Which we do have some good dark dragon. This can search vice dragon. This can search so many dragons in our deck. It's actually kind of crazy. So just using itself, it can search pretty much any dark dragon. That is actually a really good pull, and I'll probably be playing that. And it's a level one, so we can now use it with the uh we can use it to summon that Lyralusk Exceed monster. Which is again pretty crazy. Pretty good. Uh, let's see what this is. Sky Striker Ace Ray. I don't know. If we can really use this card, it's a warrior. We might be able to use it. If we pull some of the extra deck monsters, I might actually play this card. I might straight up play this. And then for our first super, Gagaga -ga -ga Magician. I, I thought we were gonna get a royal. I was that could have been it. I, I would have I would have left the room. Once per turn, you could basically uh, modulate this card's level, which can be useful. It's a spellcaster. I wish it was a warrior. I really wish it was a warrior. But honestly, though. I might actually play this even in the warrior deck because we can summon like vice dragon normal summon this and go into a rank five or we can summon any level four summon this and now we've got and now we've got rank four just leave it as is but this card's actually kind of crazy because no matter what level we play we now have essentially access to every single x seed from one to eight which is actually kind of crazy because it doesn't matter what we have if we have vidjom we normal summon this. We make it level one. And now we can make level one, level one X seeds. We literally just opened up our entire X seed line from one to eight, which is which is kind of insane. This is actually kind of crazy. So this is good. Omni Dragon Brotar is insane. This plus Omni Dragon Brotar is kind of crazy. And I just realized uh, that the Dragoonies actually searches spellcasters or warriors. So this is actually searchable too, which is. Unbelievable its stats are okay, and then we've got small world which my brain hasn't even wrapped around The concepts that can go there and let's see this last card glow up bloom Wow That is really good That is so good, but we don't have zombie world That is so good, but no zombie world, but it's a tuner and it's generic like it can it's a level one tuner and then it searches as it searches a level 5 or higher zombie, absolutely for free. If we ever pull Eldritch, that is going to be insane. So we've got Gagaga, Ga, Ga, Omni Dragon, Brotar, probably getting thrown in the deck ASAP. This is like for the future. This, my brain hasn't figured out yet. But these two are like instantly in the deck. Let's go open the le Legacy Packs. This has been crazy. This, this episode has been absolutely wild. Alright, let's open up these Legacy Tickets. I mean, things have already been better than they should be. So whatever we open, I'm, I'm going to be reasonably happy. Who the hell is this thing? This looks like those 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 insects Nappa and Vegeta fought on that planet that one time. What is this? Thing? I've never seen this card. Who are these cards? Like, I, is that a real card? Or did they just make this for the game? I've never seen that. Card designator. That helps us in no way whatsoever. 
Oh, Kashtir or Fenrir. Here, add it. We're, we're losing already. We want to lose even more. I, who? Why would you do that? Add a card to your opponent's hand. It's like reverse ash. Earth chant is a ritual for Earths. I don't know that we have any Earths, but that's generic Earth ritual. It's not bad. Blasting the ruins. All right. This is not going to happen. 30 or more cards in our opponent's grave in our our graveyard inflict 3000. That's just not happening. I don't care how I don't think we've ever done this. I don't think we've ever successfully done this. So I am not playing this in the deck. But that is the end of the episode. This was really really good ending there's been a lot i can't wait to see what you guys have to say in the comment section because you guys are great for deck building you remember every single card i've ever pulled so you know you know everything i've got so let me know if i should what changes i should make but thank you for watching la, 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 la.